What we have here is a fairly basic app that has a few posts. This can be managed by going to slash admin. This path is accessible by anyone, so let's change that by adding basic HTTP authentication to it. The code is simple, having a public facing post controller at the root level and another one under the admin namespace, which is where I will implement the basic HTTP authentication. Normally, I would write a spec first, but testing without fully understanding how this authentication type works makes things difficult. Having this said, I will call the Rails HTTP basic authenticate with method and pass it the name and password that will be required to access this controller. Now let's have a look. Providing the wrong or no name and password will return a forbidden access page while passing the correct credentials allows access. But how does it work? If we look at the request header we've just made, the browser sent an authorization header with the value basic plus some sort of token. It looks like a base64 encoded string. Let's find out what it contains. I'll paste in the authorization header and remove the basic word. So it contains the name and password separated by a colon. With this newfound knowledge, let's write a spec. I'll only do it for the index action as the other ones are similar. First, a spec where we're not passing any credentials. In this case, we should receive an unauthorized HTTP error code. And then another spec where we'll expect the page to be received successfully. Let's extract the request into a named subject and then set the authorization header. This is done by setting the HTTP authorization env value to basic plus the base64 encoded user and password. Do the specs pass? They sure do. The only issue is that anyone with access to the git repo will know the admin user and password as they're hardcoded in both the controller and its spec. We could use an environment variable, but I will actually use Rails' encrypted credential store. This was opened using whatever my terminal editor variable was set to, which in my case I had set it to Vim. You likely have one already set though, for example, it's the same editor that is used when running git commit. So I'll add the name and password here. Given this is just a YAML file, make sure that if any of the values is just numbers, you surround it with quotes to make sure it gets converted to a string. Additionally, to pick up these values, Rails needs to be restarted. We can access them by calling Rails application credentials. To read them individually, we could call admin password or name respectively. But in our case, we can just pass in the admin value directly. However, if this key is not set, we won't get an error. So let's read it using fetch. To try it out, First, I will log out by clearing my browser cache. Having restarted Rails and providing the same credentials, the authentication still works. The name and password are still hardcoded in our spec, 
So let's update it. First, I will create a dummy credentials hash in a let block. Next, I will stop the call to the Rails application credentials to return our dummy values instead. Lastly, in our request header, we'll need to pass in the new user and password. Running the specs, they strangely fail. It looks like our stuff didn't work. The controller file is loaded and after that it gets run. What this means is that at load time the credentials get expanded into a hash and changing them later won't do anything. We could divide the authentication to take place in an instance method, but I would rather not change the code if I can help it. So let's leave it the way it was. I will solve this by creating a credentials file for the test environment. I am just going to fill in the dummy values from our test. If we run the specs, they pass, which means they are using our new credentials. The credentials edit command generated a decryption key. This is normally read from a file depending on what environment Rails is running in, but it can also be passed through an environment variable. So if we would provide a wrong value, we would receive an error. This is how you would use this key in production because we wouldn't want to commit a default master key file. Although it's in git ignore, so it's rather difficult to mess things up. Back in the spec, I can now remove the stub we wrote earlier. I'd also like the specs to be run anywhere with the least amount of setup so I will allow the test decryption key to be committed in git. Remember, the master key is the one that's used outside the test environment and it's imperative not to commit. Let's do one last thing. When we're logged in, display a link to admin on the homepage. On the homepage index template, we need to check for an authorization request. And then we'll render a link to slash admin. The link has appeared. If we force a logout, it's gone. And after login, it's back again. Awesome. Well, this was it. Thanks for watching.